Hi everyone, I want to welcome you to Hope in the Pain. My name is Kim Peek and I am the host of this podcast. And this podcast exists to encourage you, to inspire you, to keep you going if you are dealing with pain in your life right now. And you know, I've said many times before, I try to remember say every episode Pain comes in a lot of forms. It can be physical, it can be mental, it can be emotional, it can be a difficult situation that you're wanting to get resolved. It can be a chronic illness. It can be a time of grief, a time of loss. But all of those, um, even though we don't compare them, uh, we never compare situations, we never compare pain, we never compare grief. But what we do is we realize that we all deal with pain to some degree in our life and we need that encouragement and that inspiration to help us keep going, to help us stay positive, to help us keep being that advocate for ourselves that will allow us to live the best life we can at whatever um, situation we're dealing with. So again, my name is Kim Peek. I want to welcome you and here we go. So I've, um, if, if you've watched episodes um, previously, you know that I'm in my own journey. I have MS and um, it's been quite a road. Um, there have been times where I've dealt with pain so significant that I'm in bed most of the day. And so right now, um, there's been some things in my life that have lessened the pain, some answers I have found, which has been awesome. I still deal with a lot of MS symptoms that really affect my life, affect it very significantly. Um, I've also said before that when I do these podcasts, there's a lot of breaks in them because I have to kind of let the pain pass. Um, you know, several times during an episode. And my son is actually the editor, the producer of this podcast, and he cuts those out so that what you see is just kind of a streamlined version. You don't see all the times I sit back and I sigh and I kind of grimace because of the pain. And so I want to thank him, give Jake a shout out, but also, um, that's just the reality that I live with. And, you know, we really need to face a reality in our life, um, not um, lessen uh, our view of what we're going through, because that just makes it harder on us. That makes it harder on the people around us. Uh, but there again, it, it's kind of a, a fine balance of really um, living in the reality of our situation, but also trying to live at the best level level we can. And sometimes that's difficult. Um, and sometimes it's a rocky road. We wrestle through that, but it's really worth it. And, and sometimes it's an everyday thing. And also, you know, life changes, right. And our, our physical, um, um, pain, our physical, um, illness, you know, doesn't just stay the same, uh, hard situations don't stay the same. And so what we're dealing with, uh, is not the same every day, right? There, there's different phases. And so it seems like I'm always adjusting. I always have to, uh, you know, make changes in my daily routine, changes in how I am managing, um, what's going on with my body. Uh, and, and so that in itself is, is kind of a job, right? You, you may have found that. So with all that said, what am I talking about today? So it's summer when I am doing this. And so what I'm talking about today is a summer reading list. Now, these are all books I have read. And what I'm focusing on today are inspirational stories. They are all women uh, that have shared their stories. And these women are amazing. They are inspiring. And I don't know about you, but I need inspiration in my life. Um, and, and that inspiration just gives me new life, right? And so what I want to do is encourage you to um, get one of these books and read it. If, if you're um, living close to me, be happy to let you borrow uh, one of these. Um, there, you know, as I have read, and if you know me, I read a lot. In fact, I have my own pile of summer books, uh, 
you know, in my office then, and I've started um, on the first one. And what, um, again, if you know me, I read a lot. And so I've gone through a lot of books. I don't have room for all those books. So I keep the ones that I love the most. So these are some that I love the most. And I guarantee they would inspire you as well. So let's get started. I just kind of want to run through these. Um, Hopefully even hearing a little bit about their stories will inspire you today and just give you um, just a a smile uh, as you think about, you know, what we can accomplish, what we can live through and what we can achieve and and how we can, you know, um, still do amazing things and and just have really a good life no matter what we're dealing with. So this is called The Grace to Race, and this is a story about a nun, right? Her name is Sister Madonna. So, um, and you'll see a picture of her. And if you see her, if you look closely, she has holding a bike helmet, and she is standing next to a bike. And this nun... Um, I don't remember how long ago this was written, but this was written around the time she was 80. It's called The Grace to Race because she's a runner. She is a triathlon and at her age. And her story is amazing. It talks about how she grew up, talks about her becoming a nun, and talks about her adult life. And then it talks about when she became a runner and then on to triathlons. And then she has even completed the Iron Man, which is, I mean, amazing. It's just amazing is the only word for it. And I just love this book. Her personality is just fun. It's just winsome. And I guarantee you would love reading about Sister Madonna. Just her name alone is so cool. Sister Madonna, right? And so... um. One person that reviews it on the back talks about her courage and wisdom shine through the pages of this warm, funny, and inspirational memoir. See, I'm telling you, it's inspirational. Everyone thinks so. So it's called The Grace to Race, Sister Madonna. You would love it. So I give this one high marks. And, uh, you know, uh, Look for it on Amazon or wherever but you buy your books. Sister Madonna uh, Buter. So B-U-D-E-R if you're looking for it. It's a great one to start with. So the Grace to Race. I read that several years ago now. Oh my goodness, this next one. This next one, if you like or love horses, you have got to read this book. And you know what? If you're not a horse person you should read this book. I mean, I like horses. I'm amazed by horses because they're so powerful. Uh, They do so many things for us as humans. Uh, Yet I know they're so kind of intuitive. And I've always known they just have a special sense to help people. But this book is unbelievable. Her name is Kim Meter. It's called um, Bridge Called Hope even has the word hope in in the name. And what this book is about is she has a ranch that she rescues horses. So she brings these rescue horses to her ranch and she cares for them, right? A lot of them have been mistreated. Uh, There's just a lot of situations uh, where horses find their way to her ranch. And what she does is she trains them to basically kind of be therapy animals, I guess is the best way to say it. This is also um, several years ago. In fact, as I'm talking about it, I'm going to reread this one um, probably this summer. Um, I cried so many times for this book. And I remember it was late one Saturday night and I was laying on the couch and I closed the book and I just started crying. It's an awesome book. It's so amazing, the story she has in here. And so um, she trains them to be therapy horses. And then people with special needs come out to her ranch and they ride the horses. And it's amazing the stories, 
how these horses affect the effect they have on people. And this is one of those books, you know, you can read just a chapter, right? Because each chapter is its own story, um, if I remember correctly. Um, actually, that may not be true. Uh, it's a story, but uh, it's kind of one that you could read a chapter, then read a chapter later, read a chapter later, um, because... A lot of the chapters do have like one story in them, but the effect that and how these people's lives were changed by coming out and seeing these horses, it, it's just something I would say unbelievable in the true sense of that word. I mean, some of these stories you read and you're like, how did that happen? The power and intuitiveness and just amazing abilities of these horses just Oh my gosh, it just got me. And so um, I would highly recommend this book. And like I said, I'm going to put it in a different pile because I'm going to take this um, into my office and put this in the pile of books I read this summer. Um, wow. Yeah, I cannot say enough about this book, obviously, because I'm just sitting here rambling about it. So again, uh, Bridge Called Hope, Kim Meter, M-E-E-D-E-R. So highly recommend that. So, uh, I take back what I said. If you're a friend and you live close, you probably can't borrow that book while I'm reading it. So, but I'll be done and then you can borrow it. Okay. Next book, Good God, Lousy World and Me by Holly Burkhalter. Oh my gosh. Let me read that again. Good God, Lousy World and Me. Wow. Wow. I, I may read this one again this summer, too. Again, it's been several years since I read this. I know Holly Burkhalter. She works for International Justice Mission, and International Justice Mission is a nonprofit that I have supported, you know, given to for several, several years. In fact, wow, when I think about it, it's been 15 years now because um, I heard about them 15 years ago. I remember. And she was like the vice president of government relations, I think. But what International Justice Mission does is incredible in itself. They have offices in like, I think they're up to about 15 or 16 countries. And depending on the country, they do different work. In India and in South Asia, Southeast Asia, they help rescue sex slaves and slaves that are... Um, you know, for la labor slaves. I don't think that's how you say it, but, um, you know, um, in India, the amount of slavery that exists is millions of people. And there are like, as an example, brick factories and, um, rice plantations, um, that enslave people, you know, um, sometimes poor people, they have a medical issue and, you know, they need to borrow like around like what would be $25. And so they borrow it, but then they have to go work it off. And the uh, slave owner, he basically enslaves them by, um, you know, adding interest on, and then they have to come live there. And so he charges an exorbitant fees for, you know, lodging, which is terrible. And their, their living conditions are just so awful. Um, and, and so international justice mission tries to help get them freed. Also, um, in Southeast Asia, there are so many brothels and girls, um, uh, mostly girls, not always girls, um, can be taken as sex slaves, even little girls. And the stories are just, they're horrific. I mean, it makes me sick. I mean, I'll close the book and start crying sometimes, but also just feel physically ill. But it's just her story of becoming a Christian. She wasn't a Christian. Um, and then the founder of International Justice Mission, you know, kind of, uh, he knew her and they, that you know, so she kind of started hearing about the work, um, I think getting involved a little bit but not as a Christian. And then she became a Christian and just her story of that. And wow, I'm going to read that one again too. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Good God, lousy world and me. 
Holly Burkhalter. Okay, this is a fun one to read. Beginner's Pluck. Not Beginner's Luck, Beginner's Pluck. By, what's her name? Oh my gosh. Uh, this is terrible. Um, Liz Forkin Bohannon. You can see this up here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, but it's Beginner's Pluck. You can't forget that. This is a gal. She is so fun. She went to Africa when she was like in her early 20s to just, she kind of went on ex exploration and, you know, she just discovered um, different really hard conditions for women. And long story short, long, long, long story short, she has started a company and it's one of those companies that the women, um, you know, they work, they become seamstresses, they make bags, purses, um, all kinds of accessories, jewelry. Um, but these are not just any items. So I got a purse. It's a leather purse. It is beautiful. I should have brought it in. It is high, high quality. It's one I bought, paid good money for it. And it's one I will keep forever, probably. It's amazing. And um, usually when I use it, it, I usually get at least one comment from someone commenting on what a cool person is. And so, you know what? I tell the story. And um, and I tell them the name of the book, Beginner's Pluck. Again, you can't forget it. So this is just kind of a fun and inspirational one to read. It would be fun to read again. They all would be cool to read again. Um, but let's see. I'm only going to put... Yeah, I'm only going to put two in my pile for this summer because I already have a pile downstairs. So, Beginner's Pluck. It's it's fun. It's really fun. And it all comes from the, the idea that, you know, we're plucky, you know, and, and she defines that in a fun way, and it's just so cool. Okay, this next one is by Tammy Jo Schultz. Tammy Jo Schultz, and it's called Nerves of Steel. And let me tell you, this gal has nerves of steel. She is a Southwest pilot, and she was an Air Force pilot, and she is one of the toughest, strongest ladies I can imagine. I would love to meet her. Um, she put up with a lot going through the military. And, you know, my picture, I don't know about you, but my picture of the military is mostly, I know, you know, guys razz each other and there's some of that, right? There's some competitiveness. But I just have the view that over all of that is the camaraderie and the mission that they're a part of for a country. And I, I love the military. I have such respect and admiration and appreciation for the military. So it was hard reading the first part of this book where she talks about being um, a military pilot. She was kind of one of the first women that, you know, walked that path. And boy, those women that did that, they really opened up the door for women. It, I mean, they really did. They, um, they put up with a lot, and they had to fight for a lot to be able to do that. And she put up with a lot and had to fight through a lot to uh, get to where she was as as a pilot. Um, bless her heart, she did. It's an amazing story, that in itself. But that's not the real story. The real story is how she was one of two pilots that landed a Southwest airline air, airplane that um, one of the engines went out, uh, took out one of the windows, it did some damage, uh, other damage to the plane, and it's, you know, flying high, you know, it was like mid-flight. And so these two pilots had to, you know, go through all these checklists and, and all these emergency procedures and figure out how they were going to land this plane. And you know what? They did it. They did it, and they did it safely. And wow, I mean, just reading that story, 
if that's not inspiration, I don't know what is. So I will read this one again sometime. Not this summer because I already have these two, but I will read this one again. It was so good. So Nerves of Steel, boy, I don't know who has, you know, stronger Nerves of Steel than, than this gal. Okay, the last one is a guy. I uh, guess I got one guy in here. Benjamin Hall uh, is uh, saved. A war reporter's mission to make it home saved. Benjamin Hall. I don't know if you heard his story. Uh, when there are wars starting and the news covers them a lot, I tend to watch the news a lot to see the stories and what's going on. And he is a Fox reporter. Um, and I did watch a lot of the Fox coverage of the war. And um, I really liked him. I just liked him from the beginning. That's one reason, you know, I'd seen him. That's one reason I continued to watch Fox because I loved his reporting and I always wanted to see when he was on. Uh, he's British. He just, I don't know, he had such a great um, air about him. I mean, he was calm. He did a great job reporting. Um, I mean, you could just tell he was kind of close to some dangerous places. Um, he wasn't always in the hotel on a balcony with uh, the city in the background. He did some on-scene reporting. You know, they went down and, and they got some stories, and that's actually where the story um, begins, a hard part of it. He um, and um, hit their translator and, uh, and the, uh, the cameraman, were in this small car and they were traveling out to get this story. I don't even remember what the story was, but they were going to go get this story. And what happened is they were on their way back and shelling started really close to them. And so they were trying to get out of the car and a shell hit the car. And he was injured so severely it's unbelievable he survived. I, I don't know how he survived. I mean, when you look at the picture, he um, lost one leg from the knee down. I think on the other leg, his other foot is severely injured. I know it's not okay. I, I don't remember the details. Um, one of his eyes he lost, and then uh, one of his hands he almost lost. And, I mean, you just think about that. I mean, that's unbelievable. I know he had some burns as well. And, um, I mean, to you just think about all those injuries. And he was in the middle of Ukraine. And it's like, how do you get out? It's not like there's some ambulance going to show up and, and take you across the border. So a lot of this book is how they got him out of Ukraine um, you know, how he didn't die and how they got him out. And then a lot of the book is also about, you know, his recovery to this point. And wow, I, I cried. All these books I cried at some point, I can tell you that. Um, but this is, this is an amazing story. All of these stories are amazing. I keep saying that word. And inspirational, I keep saying that word. And that I cried, I keep saying that. But you know what? It's true. It's true about all of them. I know you would enjoy any of them. The stories are amazing. And I just hope you'll do something this summer, whether it's reading one of these books, whether it's reading a different book. I, I don't know, whether it's reading a documentary of somebody, I mean, watching a documentary, whether it's talking with someone that has a great story. We need inspiration. We need inspiration in our life to keep us going, uh, again, to just keep us having hope and to keep us believing in good things. There's so many reasons we need to be inspired. And so um, that's all I wanted to talk about today. Uh, again, I think this is a little shorter, not real short, um, but I, I wanted to share these stories with you. I... Um, I would love to hear how you are going to inspire yourself, how you're going to be inspired this summer. Um, you can leave a comment 
the YouTube comments. You can follow me on Instagram, Hope in the Pain, and send me a message. I would love that. Um, but I would love to hear from you and see how you are going to be inspired, how you are going to have hope this summer, and how you are going to make the most of life. Please join me again, and thanks for joining today.